Hi there. Um, my FM DXing career is uh, about 10 days old now. Um, I've been quite lucky, I think. Um, I've caught some nice stuff. A couple of signals from Algeria. Um, I've got some other signals, some of which I think might be Russia or Ukraine on the uh, OIRT uh, band that I haven't uploaded yet. But it hasn't taken me long to realise that on those days when there's a sort of big sporadic E opening, you know, quite often it's a huge pile up, multiple signals on multiple channels, and you've got to be very, very quick with the record button because um, you miss a lot more stuff than you record. Um, and so it became pretty obvious pretty quickly that using SDR to uh, to help catch uh, not only the number of signals that are, can be possibly heard during an opening but with station identifications you know recording on the top of the hour I mean it's the same situation as medium wave DXing um, it, it helps a lot uh, if you can record you know signals you know on on the hour or on the half hour to catch a station ID with FMDX you know there's literally hundreds of you know potential uh, stations on the same frequency maybe thousands um, and when you've only been doing it for 10 days it's almost impossible uh, to figure out what you're listening to um, luckily you know there's a lot of help available um, with my friends and colleagues on YouTube but um, you know recording and opening uh, using SDR is definitely uh, the right way to go now I have the ELAD FDM duo, um, but it only mine only tunes to 54 megahertz, I think. Um, so what I decided to do was try this out with my new Alec uh, RTL SDR dongle. Um, now I've been using SDR Sharper, um, which has got more a sort of it's a more fully featured interface. Problem with it is that one, I think there are some questions about its legality, but also two, there's not much support for it. Um, whereas with SDR Sharp, there's a lot of support. So what I thought I would do would be to switch back to SDR Sharp, which I had downloaded onto my um, Microsoft Surface Book. Um, so I did that this morning, um, and which was very straightforward then I figured that I would need a way of uh, playing back uh, my spectrum recordings and so that involved downloading like a plug-in module module uh, WAV file uh, player um, so what you have to do is you have to download that module and then you have to basically extract it into the SDR sharp directory and then there's a line of code that you have to copy into the config file so as when the software boots it boots up that module um, and that was straightforward um, you've got to be sort of fairly confident working your way around a computer but it was pretty straightforward um, so I did that and then uh, I thought to myself because it's FMDXing um, RDS would be very useful now SDR Sharp does come with RDS. In fact, this is uh, Radio 4. Um, uh, and you can see the RDS data coming through here, but that's all you get. Um, and I was reading online, and there's a piece of software called RDS Spy, which uh, is designed to work with a number of software defined radio uh, platforms uh, <coughs> excuse me and I thought that would be a good idea so um, sounds straightforward but you download that piece of software separately but in order to make it work you have to take the audio out from SDR sharp and pipe it basically uh, <coughs> excuse me into <clears throat> RDS Spike. Uh, now, to do that involves um, 
downloading another module, um, MPX out. So I downloaded that module and there's another line of text that you have to copy into the um, plugin sort of config file, it's an XML file. Did all that, booted up SDR Sharp and <clears throat> it wouldn't load because the the build, the runtime build on the module was newer than the version of SDR Sharp I had. Now I thought I had it, the latest version which I thought was 1361 but actually uh, it's 1577 uh, is the latest version or at least the newest version I could find so I had to basically download another version of SDR Sharp. I then had to cop uh, copy and paste the uh, WAV uh, file uh, player into it uh, and then MPX, the MPX output uh, module uh, got that going um, and then it started working. So I then realized that in order to take the audio from SDR Sharp, which is here, um, uh, just see if I can, there we go, uh, enable MPX output. What you have to do is you have to take the, you have to be able to hear the audio output Obviously on SDR Sharp, you have to take, you also have to pipe it from here to um, RDS Spy. And if I show you, um, so you can do it via a sound card, but your sound card's got to be able to support 100, 192 kilohertz uh, sampling rate for recording. Um, and the way you do it is you have to basically download what's called a sort of virtual audio uh, pipe. Um, now the software is free, uh, and in fact what I'll do is let me show you. <coughs> so hey, here's my audio uh, settings. So here you see cable input, um, uh, basically a virtual audio cable playback, um, and then the same for recording, and you set those as kind of default. Um, and then basically you take audio device uh, output is one end of the cable and then the other end of the cable uh, is basically configured in RDS spy so there you go you can see it there um, and when you do that and fiddle about with some other settings uh, eventually um, you get RDS data it synchronizes and as you can see here we go BBC Radio 4 you get loads of information with RDS spy um, there's a kind of dialogue box with uh, status information you can see here actually I don't know if you can read that but peak input signal levels minus 7 dB now it's zero so it's probably a bit too high so I maybe need to sort of turn it down turn down the uh, uh, the level slightly on the virtual cable um, and then you get basic RDS decoder information so there you go varied speech from GB national coverage date and time local UTC time error um, and then the, the radio text, there you go, Sean Curran reports from Westminster from Radio 4 today in Parliament, pretty good. And there's other information, um, there you go, uh, various frequencies that Radio 4 obviously broadcasts on, um, even geographical information, broadcast area information, I had no idea. Um, but there you go. So what I now have is a is an SDR setup um, that will allow me to um, DX uh, FM uh, during sporadic E openings with um, a working SDR, uh, sorry SDR, um, RDS software, um, and you can obviously record and play back. So. But one thing I would say is that if you're, you need to be pretty confident in using a computer, particularly loading software. Um, if it doesn't work, don't panic. You know, you've got to sort of get online, get onto Google, start sort of looking at, you know, figuring out why um, bits and pieces don't work straight away. You know, on and off, I spent it, cost, it <laughs> took me nearly a day on and off to get to get this all working. Um, 
but uh, I'm sort of pleased with, with the result now. Um, and right now, um, I'm using uh, the uh, Benito uh, Meg Active MA305 antenna. Um, you won't be able to see that because I'm sat outside and it's in the dark, but I've basically, uh, you might just be able to see, you can see it's got it on a tripod uh, two or three meters up in the air. Um, and you can actually see, actually, if I switch the power off to the MA305, there we go. Now I'll switch it back on again. So there you go. Um, so I suppose what I have here is a fully portable um, FM kind of DXing setup um, with a really kind of full featured, powerful uh, RDS. Uh, system. So I had a quick look tonight um, uh, and there wasn't, uh, I didn't hear any sporadic -y, um openings at all, didn't hear anything um, below 88 megahertz or on the uh, OIRT band but um, the, the system, the kit is ready to go basically. Let me know what you guys think about this because if if there is any interest I mean the other thing of course is that all this software is free so effectively and, and I've tried this system just with a piece of wire um, for FM and and that does work uh, very well so it is all free if you guys if there is any sort of serious interest in you guys out there wanting to basically replicate what I've done I could do another video that goes into much more detail uh, regarding what software to load, how you load it, um, which files have to go in what directories, what the uh, lines of code have to go, you know, have to be in, you know, which uh, config files, XML files that they need to go into. I could, um, I could do a video. I think there is, I think there is a video out there, um, but and it's good video. It doesn't, it kind of doesn't start quite at the beginning, um, but it'll be interesting to see how all this goes. Um, once I've got it set up and we actually do have a sporadic key opening but uh, so there you go SDR Sharp uh, RDS Spy uh, and MA305 antenna well that's about it um, hope you found that interesting um, as always your comments are most welcome uh, thanks for watching